Hey there, and um, today we will look at this lab, finding a hidden GraphQL endpoint. So again, this lab is powered by a hidden GraphQL endpoint, but you won't be able to see the endpoint by simply clicking pages on the side. Also, this endpoint has some defenses against introspection. So to solve the lab, we have to find the hidden endpoint and delete Carlos user. Okay, let's dive into it. Make sure your burp suite is on. And let's turn on the burp proxy and explore the site. So I already logged in and this is the username Viner. We can update the email as well. And just explore the site, nothing much in it. Okay, let's go back to the HTTP history and over here we can see some endpoints but not any specific API endpoint these are just normal HTTP request so I'm gonna select one request and send it to repeater also I'm gonna add this to scope and show only in scope items okay let's go back to repeater and send this request everything is normal we're getting a normal response but we are not sure that is there any api endpoint or not okay so if you are not sure if this application is even using graphql or not you can try to send request to some particular path so there are some common paths in graphql that you can try let me scroll up a little bit yeah so you can try sending request to slash graphql or api or this you can try multiple paths like these so I'm going to try GraphQL here and it says not found let's try changing it to API but this time we got a different response we got query not present seems like the server is expecting a query okay so since we got a response in a GET request, we can try sending a parameter over here, something like this. Let's try to send the request again. And this time we are getting a GraphQL error because this structure is of GraphQL. It says invalid syntax because we didn't provide it any query at all. Okay, so now we have found that the GraphQL does exist. The next step would be to give an introspection query and try to get a response. Okay, so let's get the introspection query from here. I'm just gonna copy it. And if I paste it over here, there will be spaces and it wouldn't be appropriate as you can look at this. If it was a post request, I would have sent it in the post body, but it is not possible when you're sending it in a query parameter. So what I'm going to do is go to decoder and over here, I'm going to paste this introspection query and encode it as URL. Now I can copy it and send it in the get request. Okay, that's pretty huge. Send the request. And in the response, we are getting GraphQL introspection is not allowed, but the query contained hyphen hyphen schema or hyphen type so seems like the graphql introspection query is disabled and it is trying to identify it by using some regex because it is specifically mentioning this hyphen hyphen schema maybe we can try to alter the query a little bit so i'm gonna go back to decoder and over here I'm just going to add a new line. Okay, now I'm going to encode this again as URL and copy this. Now I'm going to replace this with the new introspection query and send the request. So we have successfully bypassed it. We are getting a proper response now. Okay. Now we have the introspection query. The third step would be to find objects that are particularly interesting for us. So 
this kind of objects basically has named something like user and yeah we can see one object delete organization user input and it has input fields as id okay let's try to explore a little more another one is delete organization user response i guess this is the graphql response for this one let's see a little more I guess there is another user object somewhere. Yeah, so here is the user object and it has field ID. And this is another field. Okay, this one is also interesting. Delete organization user. And it's taking argument as input. And this object itself has another object that is delete organization user. So they are like correlating to each other and inheriting each other properties. Okay. Now building queries by looking at this response would be a little difficult. Honestly, I tried to do that and it took me hours and I was also a little confused. Then I stumbled upon this another feature in GraphQL. I didn't even knew that it existed, but you can save the GraphQL queries to sitemap and from here this feature will automatically build queries for you that's crazy man and this is lifesaver okay so we can see number of queries over here if you want to have a better look instead of this click on this tab and here you have the mutation request this mutation is delete organization user input which we saw and it is taking input as argument and id and username as fields which we also saw earlier and here are the variables so you can change the id number to any id number and try to delete the user let's have a look at another one so this query is actually taking id as argument and it's trying to get a user according to the id number and it's going to return id and username in the response okay let's send this to repeater if you send this request, you'll see that it says null because id0 doesn't exist. Let's try to change this to 1. And here we are getting administrator as response. Okay, id1 exists, but in order to solve the lab, we have to delete the Carlos user, right? So we need to find the id of Carlos. We can just start incrementing the number and find out the possible users id2 is Weiner, id3 is Carlos. So now we know the Carlos id. Okay, let's go back to the target and send this request to the repeater as well. Okay, we know the id number of Carlos is 3 and this mutation request basically deletes a user. So let's change the id to 3 and send the request okay and it sees that the user is deleted with username carlos let's go back to the lab refresh the page and it says salt okay so i personally really enjoyed this lab and creating a video on it as well let me know your views in the comment section Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.